This is the window of Robin's childhood, spent in Howrah. The window does not exist anymore, but keeps on coming back in Robin's dreams. His prolonged illness in his childhood confined him to one room for four long years. He spent that lonely time looking through this window. His illness alienated the eight-year-old boy from his known playful world, surrounded by friends and cousins. The various shades of life outside the window, from morning to evening, slowly inspired Robin to spend his solitary hours with his sketchbook. That was the beginning of the making of Robin Mondol, one of the most eminent artists of contemporary India. His journey to his ancestral house still plays a major part in his creative world. Not very far from Rubin's house in Howrah, there was a prostitute's quarter, which could be seen only from the rooftop of the house. The children were not allowed to go up there once evening had started to fall. Nevertheless, the curious mind of Robin would take him to the roof often, eluding the vigilant eyes of elders. The movements of those distant figures and their visitors, the songs, the laughter, even the sounds of violence and all the images they created in Robin's mind came back much later on his canvas when he first started painting the brothel series in 1950.
Robin's environment has always been a rather harsh one. The world in which he grew up forced him to witness some of the cruelest phases of human civilization, such as the Second World War, the Bengal famine of 1943, the partition of India and the subsequent communal riots. Painting did not emanate out of any abstract philosophical thinking in his life, but was always a painful experience. The world of the prostitutes observed in his childhood days was not only a vibrant theme for Rubin's artistic creativity, but it also allowed the painter to juxtapose apparently colorful themes with ramifications of violence, anguish and suffering centering around the lives of those women. The men and women in Rubin's paintings never look pretty. Instead, they evoke an intense passion, an inner strength and vigor, and the scars of social conflict. These paintings are powerful enough to move the viewer creating a profound and disturbing impact. Since his childhood, the life around and within Robin gave him a sense of universal suffering which gradually shaped his vision, helping him to realize early in his life that painting was his true vocation. He was barred from admission to the government art school because he was not a matriculant as his schooling had to be discontinued due to the severe illness in his childhood. With great determination, Robin covered the syllabus in half the time of the four years he had lost and passed the university's matriculation examination to qualify for admission to the government art school. However, financial difficulties and family obligations forced him to discontinue his days with the government art school. Robin holds drawing to be an essential part of painting. Yet it also has an independent role, which he often utilizes for jotting down his own day-to-day -day experiences and ideas through lines and forms. These drawings are something very different from the rough sketch or a layout for a painting. 
To Robin, these drawings are often the product of the intimate interaction between the conscious and the subconscious, involving a creative process which transmogrifies all manner of experience to visual images. In his work, Rubin is at ease with brushes, permanent markers, color tubes and palette knives to bring out his desired images. In Robin's paintings, the real and the unreal merge to make his work remarkably different from that of his contemporaries. While many of his friends have changed their style and adopted new forms, Robin has been pursuing the same images which played in his life in the early 50s. His recurrent images and forms always evoke a sense of primitiveness, as though born out of darkness. These unique paintings possess a raw vitality as well as a simplicity and freshness. Although one may not warm to Rubin's works on the first encounter, one may feel disturbed by the images. However, their allegorical significance is challenging and plays on the conscience of the viewer. Rubin treats drawing as a habit of writing a diary. Just like his day-to-day -day creative activity, writing a diary and expressing his inner thoughts, sometimes in form of poetry, is also a regular practice for Rubin. Although he has never indulged in it, in any planned or deliberate way. Robin employs a characteristic process of drawing and painting. So many times he has started a painting merely by putting lines on paper without even knowing what may eventuate. It is at this point that his subconscious takes over while his conscious mind does not really have any idea of the final shape of the work. Robin painted this picture years ago, at a time when the works of Van Gogh would move him deeply. 